Hi, I'm Chad with Move for a Guitar. This lesson is from our series Caged Theory. In this lesson, I'm going to explain how the major caged chords work with the major scale. First off, if you like all the diagrams for this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, Cage Theory. But I am working on it as I'm filming this lesson, so it might not be available as you're watching this lesson. If it is available, a link will pop up on the screen that will allow you to download it. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to download it when it is available. This is part 10 from our series, Cage Theory. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So in the last lessons, we looked at how the major cage chords work with the major pentatonic scale and the minor cage chords work with the minor pentatonic scale. In this lesson, we're going to look at the major cage chords again, but this time we're going to look at how they work with the major scale. And again, if you don't understand the major scale, if you don't know how to build it, don't have any theory behind it, you can check out our series, Music Theory for Guitar, where I explain that and much more. So this is taught a lot when people are talking about the cage system. They talk about the major scale and show how the chords fit within it. And usually you show it with the five pattern major scale. So anytime someone's talking about the five pattern major scale, it's usually because of the cage chords. There's five cage chords, so you break the major scale up into five patterns, and then all those chords have one pattern that they fit within. If you're just learning the major scale and not worried about the cage chords or learning major scale in another way, there's multiple ways you can play it or break it up on your fretboard. And the way I like the most is seven pattern system because then each note of the major scale gets a pattern. But it's also good to be able to look at it with five patterns when you're talking about the cage system. So again, this can be useful for multiple reasons. It can help with soloing and stuff. But the thing I think is most practical to use it for when you're starting out is to be able to play a chord and then quickly see what notes around that chord you can use to throw in little fills, licks, or riffs. And like I mentioned with the major and minor pentatonics, it's something that Jimi Hendrix would do all the time, but you'll find it in many styles and with many different players they'll do stuff like this. And this is a really easy way to visualize how to do that. So on your screen obviously is the G major scale. Doesn't matter what key we are doing this in, I'm just doing it in G. It would work in any key, just be in a different spot on the fretboard. So if we were to take G major scale pattern one, if we're talking about the five patterns, this would be pattern one. If you're talking about seven patterns, usually pattern one starts on the root note, but with the five pattern system, you're starting on the seventh. So one note below the root note. So within G major scale pattern one, you have the E shape bar chord. So we're in the key of G, so this is a G major bar chord using the E shape. Then we can throw the notes back in like we did with the other scales and now we can see the E-shaped bar chord surrounded by major scale pattern one. So now you can quickly see if you were to play that chord, you'd have all these notes that you could throw in as little licks or fills to create little licks or fills or riffs. Then if we go to pattern two, pattern two has the D shape in it. So this is a G major chord using the D shape. If we throw the notes back in in the gray, you can visualize the D shape in there with major scale pattern two surrounding it. So again, you can play that chord and then use those notes and the notes of the chord to create little licks and fills. Now we go to pattern three. Within pattern three, you have the C shape. So this is a G major bar chord using the C shape. So if we throw the notes back in around it in the gray, you, you can see the C shape bar chord with the major scale pattern three around it. Go to pattern four. In pattern four, you have the A shape. So this is a G major bar chord using the A shape. And if you throw the notes back in around it, you can see how it lives within pattern four of the major scale. Then if we go to the last pattern, this is G major scale pattern five. Within that pattern, you have the G shape. So this is a G major bar chord using the G shape. You also have the option to move the five down to the third and have this shape as well. Either one works. So there's the chord. If you visualize the pattern around it, it would look like this. And now you can see the G shape in there and major scale pattern five surrounding it. Then if we look at the whole G major scale up and down the fretboard with the major cage chords highlighted in the black or red and the numbers in them, the intervals, you can see what it would look like. So right here in the key of G would be your G shape. Here's your E shape. Here's your D shape. Here's your C shape. 
here's your A shape and then you're back at your G shape one octave higher. So again, like I mentioned with the pentatonic scales, this is important to be able to visualize up and down your whole fretboard. It's important to be able to see all the cage chords up and down the fretboard and the major scale up and down the fretboard so that you're not just stuck playing in position, which means you're not just stuck playing with one pattern in one spot on the fretboard. And it's important to start off in position by starting off visualizing each of the patterns and the chords within the patterns as a good starting point. But eventually you want to break free from just being stuck like that and being able to, for example, play one chord in one spot, like if you played this E shape right here, not to just be stuck with these notes around it, but to also be able to grab other notes up the fretboard. Maybe you want to grab some other notes and to be able to visualize that as well. And so when you're looking at the major scale in five patterns, like I said, it doesn't start on every note of the major scale like the seven pattern one does. So it's important to be able to visualize the cage chords to know where all the patterns are. For example, pattern one starts right here on the seventh. Then you don't start a pattern on the root. Pattern two starts on the two. Pattern three on the three. Pattern four on the four. Then you don't start one on the fifth. And then pattern five is on the sixth. And then you're back to pattern one right here. So here's pattern one, that's where it would start. Pattern two would start here, pattern three, pattern four, and pattern five. So if you visualize the cage chords, that's easier to see. Because when you're playing the seven pattern scale, each pattern just starts on the next note of the scale, so it's easy to know where your next pattern is. But when you're playing the five pattern scale, you're having to skip to the notes to start as your starting points for patterns. So you have to visualize the chords to be able to see easily where these patterns lie. So that's how the major cage chords work with the major scale. Go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to show you how all the cage chords work with the major scale modes. And be sure to download the e-guide. All the diagrams are in there. And be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.